The Aptec S range, the most user-friendly junction boxes of their kind on the market today. Like any good junction box, each fulfills six basic requirements. They're easy to mount either on a bulkhead wall or joist. They have maximum flexibility for cable entry. They are easy for the installer to wire up. They have good seals, not only for the lid or door, but also on the cable entry points. They're easy to fasten. And most importantly, they're user-friendly. But the Aptec S range of boxes doesn't merely cover these requirements. Its designer, Alan Bennett, has made sure that each feature has been designed to achieve maximum effect. The Aptec S is available in a wide range of 29 different enclosures, supplied in three depths. All but the three smallest sizes can be fitted with removable entry or gland plates on all four sides. Each has a hinged, lift-off, padlockable door. One of the first innovative features you will notice is the slotted back strap at the top. This allows the installer to fit two bolts or screws at the top, hang the box loosely, mark the position of the bottom fixings, and then drill the mounting holes. The initial design had only one entry or gland plate at the bottom. It was wrongly assumed that this was where the cables would always enter. So, gland plates are now available on all four sides. The original design also had fixed terminal rails, which made access for cabling or connecting difficult, with the installer either catching his hands on the terminals or having to remove the rail to avoid this. So, to make the box even more user-friendly, horizontal C-section rails are now mounted on threaded pillars welded to the rear wall of the box. The vertically mounted terminal blocks are fixed the rails in such a way that they can be slid from side to side, allowing the installer to create maximum accessibility for cabling or connecting the conductors. Let's imagine that we're bringing in a main multi-core at the base and smaller cables at the left and right hand sides. The terminal rails would be loosened and pushed to each side. The multi-core is then brought in and the cable is formed to the left and right like the branches of a tree. The two rails are then moved to the right-hand side. The cables from the left are brought in and terminated. This process is then repeated in reverse with the cables from the right. The rails are then moved back to their centralized positions, forming this neat configuration. Let's now take a look at the seal which, from a safety point of view, is one of the most important features. This is a variant of the labyrinth or knife edge seal. It is fixed to the inner perimeter of the door into which the upstand of the carcass mates when closed. On the earlier prototypes, the seal was on the upstand. However, this proved to be ineffective, as the seal had a tendency to crease at the corners and the likelihood of water ingress was heightened. Also, if the door was fastened incorrectly and wasn't flush, it was impossible to tell whether the seal was being compressed all the way round. For the new seal to be most effective, it was essential that the door could perform under varying pressures and remain watertight. It was noted that if the jet of water was directed from behind the enclosure, it had a tendency to force the door away from the carcass. So, how could this be remedied? The answer lay in the design of the hinge. If the female section is bored out to a diameter of three millimeters, greater than that of the male hinge pin, the door would then float up and down, with the downward end stop being provided by the length of the door securing bolts, the depth of the door return, and the hinge movements. The door is prevented from cutting the seal through over-tightening by the securing bolts bottoming out on the carcass return. So if a jet of water was directed at the door, the lid would move down, compressing the seal further. Simple lipstick confirms that if the last hand is two millimeters into the seal, and the material is two millimeters thick, and the water ingress half is a minimum of six millimeters. With alternative designs, the lid fixing is achieved utilizing threaded blind hand pushes fitted to the box body. But this has proven impractical, since a minimal amount of use and inconsistent lighting conditions render this system of fixing unreliable 
inside its own small cage, it's yet a further feature which ensures that the door is free to float if necessary whilst remaining tightly sealed. With the range covering 29 enclosures in three depths, there's always a significant amount of landing or entry space available for cable entry. So, with its innovative user-friendly design, the Aptec S range of junction boxes has to be the most versatile on the market today.